Hi, I'm Ted Nelson. A lot of people don't like me. After I'm gone, many people will want to sneer at me because I made no simple contribution, except for the back button, which I invented. Like many people, I want to defend my reputation against the mockers to come. Not everyone defends their reputation legitimately. Isaac Newton, who hardly needed to, furthered his reputation by downgrading the great scientist Robert Hooke. The Duke of Wellington, famous for defeating Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo, spent the rest of his life downplaying the fact that the Battle of, Lou, of Waterloo was mostly won by German-speaking soldiers arriving from all over. <clears throat> but I want to be completely honest. In the write-up below this video are the addresses of the things I talk about. I have a unique place in history, but hard to understand. In summary, I thought of a lot of things early. I had the big picture. I inspired a lot of people. I've directed a number of large projects. I won't talk about the mistakes I've made or speculate about how the world might be different if I hadn't. I'll just talk about what I did and what I would like appreciated. Mostly, it's about what I thought of early and tried to do early. Notably, I led a team to design a worldwide hypertext system long before there was an internet, let alone before the World Wide Web. I'll skip many things, including my writings and lectures, except for one book, and just talk about the main projects and events and who was influenced. As a boy, I looked forward to a chromium future. I wanted to be Walt Disney, and I wanted to be an inventor and an innovator. My father offered me a career as a Hollywood actor. Hmm. I wish now that I'd taken it, and it would have financed, me on, uh, financed my other ideas, but I was on a roll to be an intellectual and an innovator. I was an innovator in college. Major career event, I had my own little magazine. Here was the third issue, of which I'm very proud. It's called Nothing. This issue, the third issue, was kite-shaped, and you had to rotate it as you turned the pages. I don't know how I did it. I was 19. Major career event. I wrote and directed what I believe was the first rock musical in college. The songs are on the Internet Archive. The address of, <coughs> is in the text that accompanies this video. And the poster. Here's the poster. Also the program for it. <clears throat> see the text for this video. And I came out of college thinking I could do many things at once, which is my style. My senior year, I was on student council, wrote a weekly column, was yearbook photographer, had my own newsletter, co-wrote the April Fool issue of the campus newspaper, shot a 30-minute film comedy, and took up knitting in seminar to, in order to stop smoking. <laughs> Still, I managed to graduate. Jumped to 1960, my second year in graduate school. At Harvard, I took a computer course and went berserk with new ideas for computers and text. In 1960, several things became obvious to me. I was struck by the fact that you could put interactive screens on computers. The guys designing them thought they would be for computer people. But I realized quickly, one, interactive screens would be the new home of the human race. I didn't actually interact with the screen for six or seven years, and I wept because it was the way I knew it would be. But the guy who was showing it to me, Don Walker at the Mitre Corporation, didn't see my tears. They only flowed on the side he couldn't see. Two, 1960 realizations. Two, with interactive screens, the computer would be a media machine, not just for text, but for audio and movies. And they could be interactive audio and movies. 1960 realization three. We would have personal computers very soon. I underestimated that time. It took 14 years. 1960 Realization 4. There would be a worldwide media network where anyone could publish. I didn't know it would be a government-sponsored federation of networks, now called the Internet. I simply accepted IBM's claim that they'd have a network, and I went on from there. I thought I knew more about documents than the technical people. So I set about designing the documents of the future for the interactive screen. With version management and visible links, 
linking to any part of text or gra graphics or video showing visible connections between pages, or as they're now called, windows. So in 1960, I didn't just want to be Walt Disney. I wanted to be the little, I wanted to be the new Gutenberg. I didn't know that Gutenberg went bankrupt. <clears throat> I quickly dreamed of starting a corporation called General Creative. That would be my Disney-like studio. Later, a computer company established such a creative image. That company was Apple. Just as Walt Disney was the figurehead and director of Disney Studios, I intended to be the figurehead and director of General Creative. In other words, I wanted to be Steve Jobs at a time when the actual Steve Jobs was five years old. Within a few, year, a few months, I had the crazy idea of opening a word processing parlor in Harvard Square before there was such a thing as word processing and before the term was invented. On the net, there's a picture of that, of, of the parlor that I drew. The address is in the write-up for this video. The GC in the upper left-hand corner stood for General Creative. I talked about this word processing parlor, and one fellow, Graham Gibbard, offered to invest $10,000 to set it up. But fortunately for both of us, I let the idea drop. <clears throat> I worked on my computer ideas for the next five years, especially on new kinds of documents. Major computer event 1965. I published five papers in the computer field and introduced the word hypertext for the computer documents I envisioned. The paper I presented at the ACM National Meeting in 1965 was quite a show. It was received with great applause. I believe most of the computer scientists in the world were in the room. It was possible at that time, and they applauded like crazy. But that didn't get me backing. Major career event 1966. Douglas Engelbart, the inventor of much of our modern world, gave me his demo in 1966, two years ahead of his famous public demo. He showed me his interactive system of windowing, collaboration, and the mouse. Doug was one of the greatest men of all time. He had already implemented hypertext. <laughs> I thought of it independently. With jump links in his NLS system. Much later, we became close friends and he performed the ceremony when I married my second wife, Marlene. Major project I didn't direct, 1967 to 69. For over a year, I think 1967 to 69, I commuted to Brown University in Rhode Island that, spo that supposedly was going to be implementing my ideas at great expense and unthanked. Instead, my ideas weren't implemented. The hypertext idea got dumbed down in the resulting publicity to one-way jump links, the smallest part of my hypertext ideas. Major project I directed, 1971 to 72. With a great guy named Cal Daniels, I started to implement my own kind of word processor, calling it Hypertyper, to be the cornerstone of the Xanadu system. I invented something I called the Enfilade for manipulating text indirectly, which had later consequences. Our backer backed out on his promise and we had to give the machine back so that was the end of Hypertyper. But in the course of that project, I invented the Enfilade, the jot interface for text that you could use without a pointing device. There weren't light pens or mice yet. And lollipop language for sorting keystrokes. It was a visualization of a state machine. Major achievement. In 1974, I published Computer Lib, a completely unexpected book that introduced many branches of computer into each other. <clears throat> I proclaimed a new world, a computer world that was coming and how great it was going to be. <clears throat> computer Lib was hugely influential, much more than I knew. It inspired a lot of people and somehow still does. The reprints have been selling. I didn't know it, but Computer Lib became the, quote, Bible of the Homebrew Computer Club in California and inspired Wozniak to create the Apple I, which in turn inspired Jobs to start the Apple Company. Further influence of Computer Lib, Phil Zimmerman told me it inspired him to create the PGP system of encryption. Further influence of Computer Lib, Mitch Kapoor told me it influenced him to create what eventually became the Lotus Software Company. Further influence, not of that book, Bill Lowe says one of my presentations inspired the IBM PC. Major project I directed. In the summer of 1979, I gathered five geniuses to work with me on the Xanadu design. Roger Gregory was the technical lead, but they worked from my specs. The others were Mark Miller, Stuart Green, Eric Hill, and Roland King. Together we designed 
software for a worldwide document and media network where every character gets an address, every document is a permutation of stabilized addresses, and links are to the stabilized characters. The group generalized my invention of the enfilade to three deep enfilades that would search the entire system. I now call this Xanadu Classic, but at the time we called this design XU88 since Roger expected to finish it in 1988, and he continued to work on it. Xanadu had been my working trademark for years, now it became very specific. Here were ideas original to the Xanadu project. Worldwide publishing by individuals, a worldwide network of small servers, the ISP concept, Micropayment, a word I coined, Internet Cafe, a place to read online, and the first wiki design. And Xanadu documents would have visible connections between pages as lines, straps, or bridges, which was in many of my writings, but never emphasized enough. We could not have imagined that we would be outflanked by anything as trivial as the World Wide Web with its single column of text. Major project I worked on, working at Data Point Corporation in 1982 in Texas with two members of my 1979 team, Mark Miller and Stuart Green. We designed a Macintosh-like system for the Data Point computer two years before the Macintosh. It was called Vantage. It would have multiple windows and visibly linked hypertext like Xanadu Classic, though simpler, but it was canceled. It might have changed the world, a big surprise to the field, uh, <laughs> with Macintosh-like windows and visible connections between the windows, but the Vantage project was canceled, and about a year later, data point went under. Major statement in 1984. I would like people to know that I was the main spokesman for freedom and privacy before the EFF. I don't get credit for that. Let me read you what I said in 1984 in a one-sentence quickie interview that's on my channel. Quote, the world of tomorrow is not going to be like the past, and the networks we move into are going to be threatened by the KGB, the CIA, Sears, Roebuck, and any number of strange, ostensibly honest, suspicious entities whose very nature and motivations must be very carefully scrutinized, so it's up to the entire public to defend itself, to look to the extension of freedom of privacy, freedom of information, freedom of association, and all the things that have made America great in this strange, new, and dark network world. And I walked away drinking my beer. Major career event. In 1988, Autodesk, a big successful corporation, buys the Xanadu Project and the Xanadu Classic Code from Roger and me and our collaborators. Roger promises to get Xanadu Classic XU88 finished that year in 1988. Unfortunately, Roger got demoted and the Xanadu team started redesigning our worldwide system so we did not make the 1988 deadline. Major career event, the World Wide Web comes out in 1989 with no visible connection between windows. I hoped at first it could be made to work with visibly connected windows, but that is virtually impossible. Major project I direct in Japan about 2000. KO Hypertransaction Project at Ohiwa Lab. At KO University with Professor Hajime Ohiwa, chief programmer was Yosuke Igarashi. This was a complete system for Xanadu assembly of documents with micropayment, <clears throat> both server and client. It had a roughly million dollar budget from MITI, Japan's Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Unfortunately, the document and no documentation has now been removed from the net except for one page. Major project I direct about 2002. I'm approached by a genius in Finland, Tuomas J. Luka, who is already famous in Finland who wants to build a version of my zigzag invention, a generalization of spreadsheet into multiple dimensions. My wonderful colleague, Andrew Pam, has already implemented a beautiful little version of zigzag, but there needs to be a much richer version with animation so the user can see what parts are moving where. So I spent a couple of months in Finland with Thomas Luca and his programmers. It was a wonderful time. Luca and his programmers built the GZZ processor. It took much longer under my direction exactly to my spec, including the animations called swarfing, a combination of swooping and morphing. <laughs> swooping is when you change the coordinates of the whole object. Morphing is when you change the coordinates of the interior of the object. You can watch Luca's, zigzag operate, uh, Luca's version of zigzag operating on my YouTube channel. The demonstration of bio biochemistry by Adam Moore is amazing. Unfortunately, because of politics, work stops on Luca's zigzag system. 
And it's usable. You can still see and download GZZ ZigZag and work with it at Xanadu.com ZigZag. Major project I direct till 2005. Working with Rob Smith in Manchester, England, we create Xanadu Space, a working Xanadu system with ZigZag internals. It was so ZigZag essentially can be used as a an application built. <clears throat> it was beautiful and worked wonderfully. You can see various demos of it. Unfortunately, we were pushing the limits of the software libraries like OpenGL, and though Rob made something like 30 versions, he was unable to make a stable distribution that would work for all cases. Major project I direct. In 2016, Edwards, Edward Betts and I pre present a high-power Xanadu server in a video called New Game in Tone. However, this is a server-heavy system, and we're still working on figuring out ways of distributing it. Other work. My theories of interaction, which I've called by various names, I presented in seminars called Cinema of the Mind. I never had time to write the book, but hundreds of pages of notes are, under the, are on the Internet Archive under the name Splendremix and other terms I used for it. Other visualizations. My proposal for spiral visualization of time is public. Spirals you can widen and narrow down to the minute or less, up to the century or millennium. It was implemented by Kenichi Unai in VRML back in the day, but that implementation has been lost. Most important, I'm still hoping for a literary genre, a form of document of parallel pages with visible connection. So looking back, those are the main events of my working life. I've only mentioned one of my 10 books and not the 100 articles I've published, the other things I've said and done. I've worked hard all my life, not taken weekends, written perhaps millions of words. I pray that visibly connected pages will someday become a decent literary genre. And I thank Jason Scott for calling them Nelson documents. Calling them Nell Docs for short would be fine. I hope I live long enough.